evening, Christian friends. It's a great privilege to be here again tonight to begin a new week of service. I guess the brother has told you that we get to keep the place for a week, and we're thankful for that. We want to thank the man here, the cooperating pastors and those who went forward to get, get it. We want to thank each one of you for giving us the invitation to stay. Above all things, of course, we thank God for the promise. We want to thank the mayor of this city and the city officials for letting us have this place. May the Lord grant his rich blessings on them also. And we'll try by the help of God the best that we know how to minister to the sick and the needy this week, the needy of salvation and for their bodies also, in the name of our Lord, the best that we know how. It's kind of a new task that we're trying now. I have for some time been trying my best to operate the meetings myself, and I mean without my manager now. There's no one here but my little son and I, 17-year-old boy. So I have to do the preaching and so forth, and I, I've always thought that maybe the Lord would help me to do that sometime, and I'm, I'm giving it a try, so you bear with me a little while. And usually I stay home. Don't eat, come into the meeting, fasting, praying, just lead me right to the platform and start right off from there, praying for the sick. Of course, it makes a better meeting, I know that, because you're already under anointing. But now, I like to come read a text, speak on the Word a while, and then pray for the sick. So that's usually what the managers do. Now, the Lord bless you. We thank you for your fine cooperation everywhere. And now... And last night, or yesterday afternoon, rather, or as last night it was, they taken in the meeting here a love offering for me. I want to thank you. I'm not worthy that you should give it to me. I didn't think about it until last night when they brought the, the, to me and said, here's the love offering for you. Well, I was really happy for that. And I'll assure you this, Christian friend, that every cent of it that I know what to do with, I'll give it to the glory of God. Anybody's welcome, just as welcome as they can be, to search through what I do with money. Every penny that I don't have to have for my family and what I have to have for my expense and things goes right straight to missionary work, and I take the gospel to the other parts of the world myself. Then I know and what it is. I never took an offering in my life. I never was able to do it. I remember one time some of my folks were sitting here from the church. And I remember here not long ago, they got a place where they... You ever have a place where you couldn't make ends meet? <laughs> I, I preached there at my tabernacle for 12 years without one penny of money. I was a state game warden in this county here also, the state of Indiana, for a number of years. And I patrolled high lines and so forth and worked made my living. I didn't need to, to... I always thought if a fella, while I was young and could work, why not work? And then I preached on the side. Pretty near every night in the week, walk right along on the high lines with my uniform on and find somebody got repented and take him down to the creek and baptize him and go on and buy my wet clothes on. That's, that's right. Farmers and everything out in the field get talking about, about the Lord and they get to crying and give their heart to God. I'd take them, pull a straw hat off and we'd go down to the creek and Settle it right there. Go on a road rejoicing. And I've done it when I have to break the ice. Go right on in and clothes froze to me and never took a bad cold over it in my life. So I remember one time, now my wife is sitting present too, so I'll probably hear from this after church. So we got to a place where we couldn't make the ends meet. So I said to her, I'm going to take up an offering. She said, I'm going over to watch you. So I... Went over to Tabernacle, I said, you think I can't do it? And I'm not because they wouldn't. Them dear people would, would be willing to cut their arm off for me. But I just didn't want them to do it. So I always know it. That's one weakness of ministers that usually takes them out of the harness of God is money. So love of money is the root of all evil. So we come here, all the Branhams, as vagabonds and as poor as they can be, I want to be like the rest of them. Here some time ago, a fellow was going to give me a Cadillac car way out in California. His wife had been healed with a cancer. And he said, well, Brother Brandon, we give Avac a Cadillac. So we'll just go right over and buy you one. I said, thank you, Brother. My old Chevrolet truck's in pretty good shape yet. And I said, 
they'd give me a Pontiac, and I just kept swapping it back each time. And so they, and he said, I, we want you to have a Cadillac. I said, wouldn't I look good coming down through Arkansas now? A big Cadillac car, and here are my people coming to me, little old women out there half dead with back trouble, female trouble, pulling a cotton sack through the field like that, about 50 or 100 pounds of cotton pulling behind them. Maybe had some fat bacon and cornbread for breakfast and say, oh, there goes Brother Branham in a Cadillac. That <laughs> don't look right to me. <laughs> now, if you got a Cadillac, that's all right, understand, see. But I'm just talking about myself. I remember I went to a convention, one of the Voice of Healing conventions. I pulled up. Here was one fellow sitting there with a great big custom-built Packard. Here stood another with a Lincoln. And I had an old 35 model Chevrolet. <laughs> that didn't look like, like a sore thumb between those big cars. But it got me there as well as theirs did. I was getting there just the same. So I remember taking this offering. I went over and old brother Wiseheart, bless his soul, he's in glory tonight. An old deacon was there, aged man. I said, I'm going to take up an offering. I want you to, I got something. Everybody began to look at me and old brother Wiseheart. Many of you here from the tabernacle are remembering. And so he went, I said, get my hat. I want to pass it. This is something. And, and Everybody, of course, went. There's a little old woman sitting in front there years ago. Hard times. She got out in one of these little pockets you carry under a little apron, you know, in the pockets beneath the apron. So she got this little pocketbook out, had a little snap on the top of it. She unsnapped it and began to pick out some nickels. My, I couldn't take that poor old thing's money. I began to feel like my heart getting about that big. I said, oh, I was just kidding you to see what you would say. My wife said, I wasn't meaning that. Brother Ryan, an old man, I think he's sitting over here somewhere. He usually seems sitting over here. He's got long hair and long beard. He come from up around in Michigan. He rode an old bicycle down there and give it to me. He couldn't get it back. It backslid on him, so I fixed it up a little bit and painted it. I took it off and sold it for five dollars, and I didn't have to take up the offering. So, I got it. Lord made a way anyhow, didn't He? So he'll make way. And I thank you very much, friends, with all sincerity of heart and with the warmest of Christian love. I, I thank you. And by God's grace, when we meet here at the great day, you'll find that I've done the best that I could. May the Lord bless you. Now, I want to read some scripture right quick and talk some out of God's word here. And then we're going to start into the prayer line. Remember, the services goes on until Sunday night, if the Lord willing. So we want to take some of the nights, just, just maybe some of the nights through the week, I would just like maybe to see if we can start the prayer line going and pray for everybody in, in prayer. Maybe, but just if you're a Christian, the only thing is this lack of faith. You can leave it right there. And just because you were told, well, then you just, if you still refuse to make that right, put your meanness in the thing you're doing, it won't do you any good. See? So healing is just your faith in Christ always. Now, in the fifth chapter of St. Luke, I read these words. And it came to pass, as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God. I like that. He stood by the lake of Gessen and saw two ships standing by the lake. The fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one which was Simon's. And prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down, taught the people out of the ship. Now when he left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down, for the, let down the net for the drop. Simon answering, said unto him, Master, we've toiled all night and taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word I'll let down the net. And when he had this done, he enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their nets break. Then beckoned they unto their partners, which were with them in the ship, and they should come and help them. And when they came and filled both ships, so that they began to sink, when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him, at the draught of fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the son of Zedevi, which were partners with Simon. 
And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch man. And when he had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. Now we just bow our heads a moment for a word of prayer. My Heavenly Father, beginning of a new week, new things ahead, one week's in history, many signs, wonders that Thou did do for us, we are grateful. Pray, Father, now that You will help us through this coming week, and may it even be much and many times greater for the glory of God only. Grant it, Father, may many sick be healed. Backsliders reclaim sinners born in the kingdom of God. May there come an old-fashioned revival throughout the country here, Lord, that will just cause thousands of souls to come, the needy coming to Christ for their soul salvation, the healing of their sick bodies. For we ask it in the name of thy beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, if I want to take what I would call a text for a few moments, would be at thy word. I like to read the word. <clears throat> it's an inspiration. The Bible said, Faith cometh by hearing, hearing of the word of God. That's true. When we hear the word of God, then faith brings forth. I'd like to look at this tonight as seeing, take it maybe a Monday. Monday, when everybody had heard a great sermon on Sunday, maybe him preaching, and he went along, he didn't have no lauded places, but he was meeting down by the seashore. Usually he had to stay away from the rich, and people who had many things of the world, so he got out amongst the fishermen, the peasants, the low type of people that was considered low type. The people who had not much of this world's goods but was rich in faith. I'd rather be like that. So there's where you found him, where people believed him. And that's where you'll find him tonight. That's where people believe him. That's where he'll be. He's always where he's... And you are too, usually, where you're welcome. Now, then we think of him as he was gathered down there. I can see him coming along with some man following him. And he stopped at the side of the, the shore. I got a picture right where he, he preached this sermon, the way it is in modern days. There's still little harbor ships there where they pull the boats in. And I hope to hold a healing service there in the next few weeks, the Lord willing. Now, he, was, he began to talk, and I see the women from up along the hillside and the man out in the field with their ox plowing and so forth. They heard that that famous preacher that had just come into light of the world was down there at the sea preaching. I can see him leaving their washing, going, stopping the ox and tying them up, going down to hear the Word of God. Oh, I'd sure like to hear him preach, wouldn't you? Uh, anything I like is hear good preaching. Hear a man preaching. And I believe, oh, of all the preaching I ever heard in my life, I just loved to hear him when he stood there and said, Come unto me, all you labor and heavy laden. I'll give you a rest. Uh, wouldn't you love to have heard that? I guess we'll never hear that. But here's one thing we'll hear if we're faithful. Enter into the joys of the Lord, thou blessed. That has been prepared for you from the foundation of the world. You've been faithful over a few things. God will make us ruler over many. What a wonderful time to think that night when the, all the battles are over and we're sitting around that great wedding supper. Won't it be wonderful? I look across the table and happen to see sitting across there Brother Willets <laughs> looking at the different ones, Sheriff Ells. Well, they was at the Carnesville meeting. You know, I, I kind of believe that we just have to cry just a little bit, don't you think so? Want to reach across the table and sit all down through there. The old battle-scarred veterans bowed across the table, holding one another's hands, weeping for joy. Won't that be wonderful? And I can hear announcement of silver blast of trumpets. Out comes the king in his beauty. 
his majestic robes around him, walk down along the table, or take his own hands and wipe the tears out of her eyes and say, Don't cry now. It's all over. <laughs> Amen. That's the day that I'm living for. That's why I press and beg and plead for lost souls and do all that I know to get them to the Lord Jesus. Then I want to sit down at his feet and hear him like these people did. He began to preach, and the people began to believe, and multitudes began to come down across the hills. This new fellow that was performing miracles, doing signs and wonders, who seemed to know things before they'd taken place. What a phenomenon. And all of them come down to hear him, begin to press towards him, get close to him. Now let's change the camera just a moment in our mind. Look, sitting up there on a stump or an old chunk along the side of the seashore, I see Peter sitting up there. And James, John, the sons of Zebedee, sitting up there and fished all night long, discouraged. Any of you fishermen know what it is to fish all night and don't catch nothing. That's really discouraging. So they'd washed out their nets and hang them up to dry and... There they were, sitting on a stump. Some of them said, well, here comes that guy, that preacher. Let's see what he's going to say. I can see the old apostle get this chunk and sit down at you while he begin to listen. Said, there's something a little different about that fellow. Moves his chunk just a little bit closer. At you while he's standing right up against him. There's something about him that drawed man to him. He's still got the same power. If I be lifted up, I'll draw all man unto me. No matter how simple the gospel is, if Christ is in it, it'll draw people. He's the greatest magnet, as we talked of this afternoon, the world has ever known. Draw man unto me. Then, when the crowds got great, I see him look around. I believe he knew that ship was there. So he stepped into the boat and he said, Peter, thrust out just a little bit. I want to preach a while. And while he stood there and began to preach to the people, well, then after he got through, he had barred Simon's boat. And he never bars nothing unless he pays for it. He said, now, Simon, I want you to thrust out into the deep, launch out. Oh, if I like to speak on that for a while, launch out. That's what's the trouble with people's faith tonight. You're afraid to turn it loose. There's many of you has got faith. But you're afraid to let it loose. Your faith without works is dead, just as the body without the spirit is dead. See? If you've got faith, show me your faith by your works. Now, see, now, Paul was justifying Abraham by faith. James justified him by works. Paul said Abraham was justified in Romans 4 by faith. And so James comes over and says that he was justified by works. Now, both of them, one confirmed the other. Now, Paul was speaking what God saw, his faith. James was speaking what man saw, his works. And if you say, i got faith in God and afraid to put your faith to works, then it will do you no good. You've got to launch out. That's what's the matter with the peoples today of this world. Many of them have faith, but they're afraid to launch out with it. You're just afraid to venture a little bit. Just to say, well, I can. I can do all things with Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Look at him. So launch out into the deep and let down for the draw. In other words, uh, I can hear Peter say, well, Lord, well, we're fishermen. Well, we, we was born and raised on this sea here. Well, we know when the moon's right and when all the signs are right. There's not even a fish in that water. Well, we toiled all night long, and we know when the signs are right, and we never even tuck one fish. We tuck nothing. And then you come around to tell me to go back in the same waters where I've been sailing and let out and get a whole boat full of them? Well, it couldn't be. If he had said that, then he wouldn't have got them. But he said, Lord, I've toiled all night and have taken nothing. But nevertheless, at thy word, I'm going to let down the net. There you are. That is the secret. Taking God at his word. If there was no fish there, God's able to put fish there. 
He did do it. That same net that went through that water all night long and caught nothing. But look when God said, put it down there. Well, maybe tonight you might have seen through every doctor's office in the country. Maybe you've been to healing meetings and been anointed many times. But tonight, at thy word, Lord, here I come. That's the way it is. At thy word, Lord, I'm going to lay down the net. Because you told me if I'd asked anything in your name, you'd do it. And I believe that's the truth. And I'm letting down the net right now at your command. Don't be afraid. Ask the whole lot. You have not because you ask not. You ask not because you believe not. That's right. Ask and you shall receive. Seek ye shall find. Knock it'll be open. That's God's word. I will let down for the draw. I can see that old apostle running that big scene out there in the water, getting ready. And when he began to pull on the net, made a couple of pulls, there wasn't nothing. After a while, something began to tug, began to take a hold. Just let down one time and try it. The first little efforts, you might not feel much. The second little effort, you might not. Maybe go several little efforts, but after a while, you'll feel the tugging. Something caught a hold. Something's on the other end of the line. Like the little boy caught the electricity in the bottle. He said, I got it, I got it. He didn't know what he had, but he had something. <laughs> Believe God. Take him at his word. At thy word, Lord, I'll let down the net. And that's what he did and caught the multitude of fishes. Unbelief, the first thing you know would have caught that when he said, let down the net and take up the draws where they've been fishing to. How foolish to the carnal mind. Well, they said there's no fish there. But God had put fish there for his word because he'd already spoke, let down the net for the drop. And if, if there's nothing there to work on, God will put something there to work on if he said so. If you believe him, take him at his word. And now, another thing. They had seen within themselves all night, and it got nothing. But one time, taking God's word for it, they got all the fish and even began to sink their boats. Man's extremity is God's opportunity. When you've gone as far as you can, when the doctor's done all he can do for you, it's, that's the time that God can go to talking to you. But when you've got something you can lean upon, besides God, you'll do it. And when it comes to the last bit, then... Then you can talk to a person about his soul. I know a man here not long ago. I couldn't speak to him at all. I'd say he'd make fun of the meeting. He said, oh, Billy's uh, cracked in the head. Went on said all kinds of things. And he was a doctor, too, an intern at the hospital. And the other night, about a few weeks ago, I was out there on an emergency call. He called me down to the room. He said, Brother Branham, a little bit different then. He said, they're going to take my arm off. So I got five children. So what will I do? Well, I said, I don't know. He said, Brother Random, I know one of our nurses here. We doctored her for about three years with foot trouble. And said, now she went up there one time as prayed for, and she's normally well. Said, I know a Margie Morgan. Said, Brother Bram, you think God will help me? I said, if you'll change your attitude and believe him. And a few days before I come up here, they told me that the doctor said there was not even a need for an operation on that man's arm. God had healed him. God's able and will keep his word. When God stuck at his word. The secret is take him at his word. If you believe it. Every man that's ever married to anything has been people who has stuck God at his word. Do you believe that? Moses back there one time. How could he ever go down and make an invasion in Egypt? There he was standing out on the desert, and he said, Lord, I'm a man of slow speech. He had an impediment. He said, I can't speak. He began to make all kinds of excuses. But when God got through talking to him and showing him his glory, at God's word, he took off to Egypt. Could you imagine? Wasn't that a funny-looking sight that day? A man taking God at his word, an old man, 80 years old. Now, here's something for your skeptic. That man was 80 years old, white beard hanging way down, long white hair hanging down his back, little old skinny body, a man 80 years old. And here he come down across the desert with a crooked stick in his hand and a wife sitting straddled of a little old mule with a kid on each hip. Where are you going, Moses? Down to Egypt to take over. <laughs> a one-man invasion. 
Going down. Why? He is taking God at His word. That's right. How do you know, Moses, you're going to take over? God's done told me so, and I'm going down to take over. Why, well, that mechanized eunuchs that they had down there in Egypt, it was the more greatest city in the world at that time, or the greatest nation, had the world whipped down, chariots and horsemen, and here one an old man leading a mule with his wife and two kiddies, and with a long white beard and a stick in his hand, going down to take the whole thing over, and he did it. Amen. God says anything, he means it. How you know you're going to do it, Moses? God said so. That settles it. Amen. I like that. Man, he will take God's Word. One time, this little boy had a sandwich in his hand, a few little bunches of fishes, a whole, about 5,000 people sitting around. Jesus, sitting on the rock, had been talking to the people. Maybe the little boy would play hooky. All I know, we call it in Indiana, hooky, truant, ever what you want to call it. He went out fishing, maybe. And he seen that man, there's something about him you like to hear him talk. Little bitty fellow. He comes up to this little lunch under his arm. Well, the people are so hungry, he's about to faint. Say, got anything to eat? Say, there's a little lad here with five little sandwiches. Said, bring him here. My, I can imagine seeing that just in a drama way. I can draw it in my mind. I can see the little fellow. Now, as long as the little boy had, what he had wasn't very much. He could hardly feed himself with that. But once what he had, he gave to Jesus. Jesus fed 5,000. You may not have very much, but turn it loose once. Let him have what you got. If you got that much faith, put it in him. Turn it loose and see what it'll do. As long as it's in his hand, it wasn't much. But when it got in here in Jesus' hand, it meant something. It would only feed him here and hardly do that. But it fed 5,000, taking up baskets full afterward. Hallelujah. Now, when I think of that, my soul shakes and trembles. God at his word. He said, cause them all to sit down. I can see him look down at the little boy and said, you believe I can do it? He said, yes, Jesus, I'm standing right by you. <laughs> I believe you can do it. <laughs> That's what he's trying to find tonight. Somebody with childlike faith who will stand by and say, Jesus, I believe you can do it. If he can get somebody to do that, he'll do it. But if you back off and say, I don't know, I'm just afraid, I know I believe you, but I, I don't, oh, he can't use you. If anything is... Helpless as a spineless person who claims to be a Christian and afraid to stand on their convictions. God don't want cowards like that. He can't use them. Like old buddy Robinson, I used to like in reading his book. He was quite a, a man. He said, Lord, give me the backbone the size of a saw log and give me plenty of knowledge in the Gabriel into my soul and let me fight the devil as long as I got a tooth in my mouth and gum until I die. That's the kind of faith and determination we need. Somebody who will do something. Hath thy word, Lord. Yes, sir. Hath thy word. He said, Hath thy word, Lord. Whatsoever things you ask in my name, that will I do. Then I have thy word, Lord. Here I come. Then I can notice one day as we was talking yesterday, there was a man who was dead. He was Rotten in the grave. Lazarus, been dead four days. I can see Martha and Mary standing there. Or Martha. Said, my brother's dead. He's even stinking at this time. But at thy word, Lord, you just asked it. You said it, and it'll be so. That's what it is. Take God at his word. Whatever God says, God's able to perform. God's down through the ages. I can see the Hebrew children that night. When they come down to the fiery furnace. They were down in Babylon. What a condition. What a time. Way down in Babylon. Them boys had determined that they wasn't going to be defeated. They were going to take God's word for it. We need some more of them tonight. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The king made a proclamation, declaration, and he said, Ever who won't bow to this image will be thrown in a fiery furnace. They said, our God is able to deliver us from this fiery furnace, but nevertheless, if he don't, we'll not bow down to you. I like that. That determination. The king said, I'll burn some of that holy road of religion out of them, man. So they've got the old furnace hot seven times hotter than it ever was. I see them tie their hands behind them. They had a prayer meeting all that night. The next day, the death march come along, plank, walked up here, a road, whatever it was, stone road, to the furnace, and it dropped off into the furnace. 
I can see the great strong man, the king, set up and said, Now we'll see how good this religion is, how much whether they'll take his word or not. But they had an issue from God not to bow down to images. Take God at his word. I can see him start the death march. The old skies are roaring red with the fire. Said, you want to take it back? They said, no, sir. Our God is able to deliver us from this, but we'll not bow down to your image. So up the road they went. As they got closer, don't you worry. You take God at his word and the devil will turn the heat on you. Don't you think he won't? Up the road they went. As they got farther, hotter, 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 they begin to get on your Shadrach, say to Meshach, are you sure you prayed through? Yeah, everything's all right. Let's go then. All right, on up. Begin to stagger from the intense heat coming off of there, getting close. One more step and they're going into there. Looks like a black picture for a believer, doesn't it? Let's turn our camera. All the time there's something going on down here. There's something going on up there too. Let's look up there and see what's going on. I can see him sitting in his great priestly robes hanging around him, watching down across. I can see this great archangel Gabriel come up, pull his sword, unsheath his sword and stand and said, Master, have you looked down in Babylon? Why, there's a man down there, three people that's tucked your word and they're standing on him. And they're fixing to burn him up this morning. I can hear him say, Yes, Gabriel, I'm watching him. I can hear him say, Look, I stood by your side. Let me go down there. I'll change the scene this morning. I believe he could have done it. I hear him say, Gabriel, you've been a good angel. You've done just what I've told you ever since I created you. But stick that sword back in there. Stuck it back there. Gabriel took his place at his side. Here comes another angel flushing up real quick. His name's Wormwood. He has the controls of the water. I hear him say, Master, look down in Babylon. Have you considered Babylon? Why, well, he said, uh, let me go down there. In the Andalusian destruction, you give me the power over the waters. I broke up the springs and brought the atmospheres down. I washed the whole earth over. Let me go down there this morning. I washed Babylon off the face of the earth. I believe he could have done it. That's right. Say, have you considered him? Said, yes. I've washed him all night long. <laughs> Amen. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Sing because I'm happy. He watches every hour. He knows everything you're doing. That's right. He said, I've watched him all night long. And you angels are a great man. And you've done what I've told you to do. But I can't let you go this morning because I'm going myself. It's a man's side job. <laughs> Amen. He said, look, they just got one more step. <laughs> They're going right on in. Sometimes God sits still and let's get to the last minute. You're the only ones in a hurry, not God. He knows what he's going to do. <laughs> you just believe him. He's on, the, he's on the answering side. I can see him come walking down. I can see him get up off of his throne, his priestly garments, drop around him like that. Great king of majesty. Like everything obeys him. I can see a great big thunderhead hanging back there in the north. I can hear him say, east wind, south wind, north and west, come here. Everything minds him. All but man. Man knows more about it than he does, or thinks he does. I hear him say, get over on that thunderhead and bring it here right quick. I got a mission for you. The winds and the waves obey him. Everything else obeys him. I see that big thunderhead roll over there, stepped up on it like a chariot. My reached up, got a hold of zigzag lightning, crashed it through the skies to let them know that he's on the hearing side. Hallelujah. I'm watching you. I know where you are. Cracking that lightning as she went through, and here Shadrach said, It'll be all right. <laughs> Don't worry. But then I see him pass down by the sea of life and pick a palm out of the, the sea of life. And about the time Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stepped into the fire furnace, there was one standing by their side, cannon away the fire. <laughs> hour after hour of pleasure in there. King said, open up the doors and see if they're there. He said, I thought you put in three. I see four and one looks like the Son of God. Wow, somebody took God at his word. On the day of Pentecost, 120 people entered into an upper room, taking God at his word. Well, how's it going to be? What is the Holy Spirit? What do you mean the promise of the Father? I don't know how it's coming. I don't know what it's going to do when it comes, but I'm taking God at his word. <laughs> Amen. Pull them away from Jerusalem. You couldn't do it. They had a commission to stay there till the Holy Ghost come. Hallelujah. They took God at his 
word. How's it going to be? That ain't the question. It's going to stay till it comes. Amen. How long? Until it comes. Stay right there. And when the Holy Ghost come like a rushing mighty wind, God's word was confirmed, and away they went. Into the streets everywhere. It's time for God's people to take God's word. Mark 16 said, These signs shall follow them that believe. Take God at His word. Lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. God bless you. You believe it. Amen. Bow our heads. Lord Jesus, I'm thinking of men and women who's took you at your word. Oh, you never leave or forsake. You're always just the time. Come tonight, Lord Jesus. Manifest thyself here tonight. And maybe many sick people here who's tried, and the doctors have tried their very best to help them. They can't do it. Maybe there's something laying back there in their life. That snake bite can't be cured until it's made right. But may tonight, may they just lay everything aside and say, God, it's your word. Here I come. I'm taking you at your word. I've seen people healed. I've heard of it. I've watched others. I've seen them in my neighborhood that were paralyzed and now walking, blind, now seeing, cancer-ridden. Doctors give them up, and now they're living and well and healthy. And now, Lord, at thy word, I'm coming tonight to you. Grant it, Lord. May your spirit be here to answer back. In Jesus Christ's name we ask it. Amen. All right, if you will, for about 30 minutes longer, I could get warmed up and... Talk about the Lord. All right. <clears throat> For an unbeliever to set among people who is believers when demons, we talked on it this afternoon, they actually are beings that get loose among people. Here's some time ago at Calgary, Canada. It become visible. Many times the sin, they look sometimes like a big spider, like a big black shadow. Sometimes I've seen one one time from an epileptic look like a tortoise. With long legs that come down whirled up like that, floating around. There at Calgary, Canada, there was 20 some odd thousand people there, and every one of them watched that. And you could have dropped a pen anywhere and have heard it, how that big black shadow moved around over the people, and everybody looking like that, and went around, went out the building. We're not playing church now, friends. So you be reverent. Here, some time ago, a bunch of boys <clears throat> wanted to. Play a trick on me. You've heard of these hypnotizers. Goes to these army camps and make somebody bark like a dog and so forth. One of them sat in the meeting. So just acting smart. Several thousand people there, and I kept feeling that funny spirit. I watched around until I caught the man who it was. I said, why is the devil putting your heart to do that? I said, God will reward you. That said, nothing wrong with me. I said, you're a hypnotizer. They begin to look like, I said, yes, you are, and God will reward you. And they packed him out of there, and he's paralyzed tonight. Don't do that. Be reverent, or don't stay. Now, that's up to you. All right, accept it out there. That, what is that then? That's God testifying that the truth has been told. Now, I want you to believe it with all your heart. And God will heal. How many people have been healed here in this meeting since the meeting's been going on? Let's see your hands up everywhere. It's been healed. Look there. Looked at it in the Bible. Examine it. Judge it to be the truth. Set their affections on God. God healed them. Is that right, ever who was healed? Is that right the way you did it? You took God at His Word and He did it. That's the only way we can do it. Just take God at His Word. Now, I think we got about 20 in this prayer line tonight, I think. And we want to see if maybe some of them that don't have their cards, maybe it's deaf or something. Have you got them about all, Billy? You think they're all there? Everything? All right. Is this your first patient, son? All right, come, lady. <clears throat>